New federal rule to require businesses with 100 plus employees to mandate vaccinations. What do you think about this? I have no problem when the federal government wants to mandate it for federal employees or for the military. That's in their purview. That's in their power. The question is, is it in their purview and their power to force businesses to do so? What do you think? Uh, this says President Joe Biden announced on Thursday that federal the federal government employees and contractors will now be required to be fully vaccinated against COVID-19 and the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, otherwise known as OSHA, will create a rule for private businesses with 100 or more employees to require their employees to be vaccinated or undergo weekly testing. A senior administration official estimated that this new OSHA requirement will cover about 80 million workers and businesses that do not comply with the agency's rule. Oh, I'm sorry, workers and businesses that do not comply with the agency's rule can face substantial fees up to $14,000. OSHA will require these employers to offer paid time off for vaccinations. Uh, president Biden says, my job as president is to protect all Americans. What do you think? Uh, let's see. Todd says, to me, it feels un-American to force businesses to do that. I I don't like to operate, Todd, and I agree with you, but I don't like to operate in the, is it American or un-American? Although I think I probably said that back talking about what Texas did. So maybe I do like to operate in it. I guess what I'm trying to say is, I'm catching myself here. What I'm what I'm trying to say is, my question is, not is it un-American because a Democrat has a different opinion of what American is. So my question is, is it is it proper use and legal use for the federal government? Remember, one of the things we talk about here on this program is just because it's a good program or it would have an impact doesn't mean the federal government should do it and doesn't mean they have the legal authority to do that. And we look past that all the time. Uh, Todd says it's a gut check thing for me. Would the founding fathers want it? Uh, Sarah says, no, the libertarian in me says, no, the businesses can make their own voice couple of things here that I really hate. Unfunded mandates. The the Democrats love to force things to happen and make businesses pay for it. That's what the Affordable Care Act was about. And I've always said, if you want to provide, if you want a service to be provided to all Americans, then you better pay for it. Don't put unfunded mandates on employers. Employers already have to pay too much per employee. And it makes employees harder to employ because of all the labor burdens that are stacked on top. So don't sit there and tell me you're going to help employees by putting more financial mandates on employers. If you want paid time off, for people to get a vaccination, then you pay for it and charge the taxpayers. And if you want employers to do a weekly testing, you pay for it. And I think they do pay for that. Um, so that's my first thing is I cannot stand the federal government putting more mandates on the employer, on the employee. And the employee is always like, this is great because I'll get this or get that. Not understanding that you already cost your employer so much. It's just going to be one more thing. Just one more thing. Uh, Heather brought up a point uh, that I was going to make. Todd, uh, to Todd, George Washington actually made his army get inoculated against smallpox. I believe that is true as well. But again, army versus citizens versus businesses. What's the line there? What's the line? I believe that this authority is and should be reserved to the states. 
I do not believe in much of what OSHA itself stands for. I don't believe the only place that Congress has any authority here, in my opinion, is to regulate interstate commerce. And when you look at OSHA and all and so many of the things that they require, they have nothing to do with interstate commerce. And that's really where Congress gets its authority. Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution, interstate commerce. And that's where most legislation is justified under interstate commerce. People think it's for the general welfare because it says for the general welfare. The general welfare is never used in court cases to justify laws. What's used in court cases is interstate commerce. Because ideally, in a perfect world, every time Congress passes something, they should be able to go to Article 1 and say, here's where we get the authority to do that. And if they can't go there to get that authority to do that, then you have to go to the 10th Amendment, which says anything not mentioned in the Constitution is reserved for the states. Boom, comes back to Utah, where it belongs. And what, what do I keep telling you about why it belongs in Utah? It belongs in Utah because that's where you can have a say. The minute it becomes federalized, you lose all say, especially in the state of Utah. You lose all say. So I don't care how good the program is. I don't care how good of an idea it is. Unless you can prove to me that the, the federal government has the authority and that they're the only ones that can do it, then that better come back to the states. So, no, I don't agree with this. I think it is an overreach. Again, you want to do it for federal employees? Fine. You want to do it for uh, for military? Fine. But let Utah take care of Utah. And uh, butt out. Now, if you want to send money uh, to help pay for these tests and things like that, I would much prefer some type of incentive. You know, I would love for them to say uh, for every vaccinated employee, you get a tax credit or something like that. I would love to see something like that because that that puts no burden on the employer. It puts no uh, burden handed down from the employer to the employee. So I'm a big fan of that kind of program. Hey, if you can get 90% vaccination rate at your business, we're going to give you a tax credit. So then the business comes around and says, hey, guys, if we can get this tax credit, we're going to have a party. Or, you know, depending on how much it is, you're going to get a raise or you're going to get an end of the year bonus. Now, we know that that doesn't always happen that way. Businesses would feel entitled to keep the money. Some would, some would pass it on. Uh, that's why people say trickle down doesn't work. The reason is because there's no built-in incentive for the trickle down to keep trickling. But if you pass the legislation correctly through incentivization instead of penalty, then you then the 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 benefit only occurs when trickle down occurs. You see what I'm saying? Does that make any sense? I hope it does. So that's my take. Um, let's see more of your comments. Heather, uh, that's more co comparable to government employees being required to get it, not private sector. So that's a response to George Washington. Um, Heather also says, I found it interesting in Biden's speech that he kept emphasizing he has the power to do these things. He said it several times, knowing most people would know, wouldn't, wouldn't know any better. I was getting hot in here. I just realized the ceiling fan is off. <laughs> I'm like, what's going on? Uh, let's see. Michael says, oh, let Texas take care of Texas, Florida, etc. They are nuts. Look, um, they can, they are nuts, but that's the whole point. The people of Texas have the ability to overturn their governments or they they get what they get i mean that's that's the whole point of representation right 
And you can't say, oh, we, 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 we're not going to have representation because we don't like the way these states are acting. We have to always remind ourselves that in this great experiment of ours, there is not just a federal government. There are, is the federal government, and then there are 50 sovereign state governments. And the Constitution says, if it's not mentioned in the Constitution, you can't touch it. It's the states who get it. And it doesn't say, unless they're whack jobs, <laughs> you know, the Constitution doesn't say, unless they're crazy. It doesn't say that. Um... <laughs> Uh, this is Sarah. She says, I had to go full time after Obamacare because the insurance that I was able to get as part time worker no longer could be provided for me. This was especially hard for me because I was at the time taking care of three disabled adults. So no, Obamacare did not help me at all. Uh, it only reduced what my employer could offer, resulting in me having to go full time. It's a perfect example. And I, and I said when it was happening, I was on the air in Texas screaming as loud as I could that this is not going to ensure more people, the mandate. What it's going to do is it's going to chase people out of full-time employment because I had seen the very same, same thing happen in Hawaii. And here's the crazy thing. We all knew that what Obama really wanted and what the Democrats really wanted was single-payer health care. Now, I will tell you, if my only two choices are a health care where the burden is put on the employer or single payer, I'm going to choose single payer. What is single payer? It's like Social Security. We all pay in and we all get the same coverage. That's what Obama really wanted, but they didn't feel like they could get it through. So they gave us this hybrid that's part government, part business. And like Sarah's pointing out, the burden often passed on to the employee and it didn't help. There are parts of the Affordable Care Act that, that have helped, but we haven't seen inflation in healthcare disappear. Uh, it's, it's continued to be out of control. So I'm not... I'm not against the single payer argument. I don't think it's the best way to go. I think it's better than this. Just me. Michael says it bleeds all over us. These other states. Yeah, it does. But um, that's still the way the Constitution was built. And it's the way I would like it to stay. Because otherwise, to me, the alternative is the federal government has all the power. We have none. So you might as well not even give us this fake vote. And then we just take what we get. And we do that out of fear of what the other states might do. I think that that's a recipe for the end of representation and the end of everything that is good and great about our government. What, what will happen in Texas and other places is there is an ebb and flow. And the pendulum will bounce back. And I think the pendulum against this brand of conservatism is going to swing back. And Biden was the first part of that swing so aggressively that no matter what the Republicans do, uh, they will lose power across the board. It's just me. I think that that pendulum is starting to swing back. Sarah says, just saying in that trying to help, they hurt me and my family. I know. I know. I had uh, in my family, when the Affordable Care Act was put in place, I had three employees in my family who were employed who were full-time employees. The minute the Affordable Care Act went into place, they all were reduced down to part-time employees. They still didn't get insurance, and now their hours were cut. Now, that should have been the most obvious result that you could ever imagine. So, unintended consequences. 